Welcome to the Nightbird Radio Podcast. I'm Timothy Saylor, and I'm going to be your host this evening as we sound out the subconscious, navigate the nocturnal, and explore the farthest reaches of our experience. Coming at you from the rolling foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains in the Great Forest, deep in the heart of the Kali Yuga. This is Radio for the Hauntological Turn. And welcome back, Nightbirds. It's great to have you back. I've got a great episode for you tonight. This one's a special one for me because Susan Massey isn't just a cool guest for the show. She's also a personal friend and has the dubious distinction of being someone who employed me while I was on a great deal of drugs. And so not only is she just a beautiful soul, but is also one of the most patient people in the world by virtue of that fact alone. Um, when I asked her to come on the show, I had kind of an idea that she probably had some cool stories, but I had no idea that she would have as many cool stories as she had. So I'm really excited to share this episode with you. And without further ado, let's get to the conversation. Yeah. So welcome to the podcast, Sue. I'm really glad to have you on. Um, it's great to talk to you again. It's been a while since uh, we've spoken, uh, besides texts. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Thanks. It's good to be on here. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. So um, we were just talking a little bit before we hit the record button about uh, you were starting to talk about some of the experiences you've had with hauntings and ghosts. Uh, if you wanted to go into that a little bit, I would love to hear some some of those stories. Well, I had a, had a weird story. You know, a lot, I noticed a lot of your uh, content is about uh, your drug use and like I also have used drugs in my life. And uh, when that happens, you know, it feels like certain channels open up in you and like you're opening yourself in ways more so than if you weren't, you know, and um, I had, I feel like I had done a lot of DMT. I had done a lot of um, methamphetamines and I feel like somebody set me on the path to having my Reiki was it like your st stages or yeah um so like a kundalini awakening or like yeah. yeah and like um i was doing a lot of that i had done some dmt i actually overdosed on dmt to the point oh, no. where i was blue and they had to bring me back and teach me how to breathe again and after that some weird stuff happened man i'm not gonna lie like uh, where even more channels opened up in a way that I was not prepared for or know that this was going to happen. You know, like when you touch that brink of death, you bring a little bit back with you. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of like the shaman, the, sh the role of the shaman, right, is going to the world of death and then bringing back gifts uh, for the people. Right. Yeah, definitely. I uh, was living in this apartment in um, Little Five Points, and, um, you know, I just hear really weird stuff all the time, and I kind of thought that, like, it was all in my head, or people were messing with me, you know what I mean, or, like, trying to freak me out, because I was on so many drugs, and, like, people take that as an advantage to mess with you. Right. So I was living in this apartment and uh, I kept hearing these bangings like or out here like people having sex, which was weird because there was nobody in the apartment next to me. So how could I hear people having sex? If there's literally nobody there. So banging on walls and like um, banging on the ceiling. And a few years ago, I went to work uh, at a bar in Little Five Points and I was talking to the cook that works in there with me and, and I said, yeah, I used to live in this apartment on Alta. And he said, yeah, me too. He said it was haunted. And I was like, wait a minute, which apartment? And he said, the one, the two little white buildings. And I was like, the front one? And he said, yeah. I said, are you talking about apartment number four? And he said, yeah. He said, it was totally haunted. He said, whoever was there hated when you had sex and would bang on the walls and all this freaky shit. Whoa. So it wasn't even just me. You know, I just thought I was losing my mind, you know, really more than anything. But it was continuing almost 20 years later. Oh, that was the interval of time? Yeah. Oh, like wow. It wasn't quite 20 years, but it was probably a good 10 to 15. A know? good chunk. Yeah. Yeah. 
And then like, um, I would definitely start to see like the bar that we worked at together. Yeah. Definitely ghosts in that place, man. Like, Oh yeah. There was a definitely a vibe there. And that whole like cluster of buildings is pretty old too. Right. Yeah. And I feel like some of the regulars that died just couldn't go away. You know? (laughs) Yeah. I think that's, you know, I've heard that kind of stuff a lot. Um, just, you know, from watching, consuming a lot of paranormal television and listening to a lot of paranormal content, just haunted bars, like when there's high energy of some kind, even my haunting experience that I think I talked about in one of my first episodes, there was some really bad stuff that happened at that house. Yeah. But there was also like years and years and years of wonderful stuff that probably happened at that house. Right. And so there were different types of energy that you could feel, you know, there was like whatever was attracted to that dark energy. And then there was also whatever was attracted to those good times. I think that all people, we so often think, Oh, spooky, scary. Right. But there's a lot of, of good energy that can be residual too. And I think a, a, a bar or like a public house or anything like that is a really good example of that because it's where people had, that's where they saw their friends and, you know, it's where everybody knew their name, right? Yeah, right. And it's definitely like a lot of times they say people don't know they're dead. So oh, they, go, yeah. they go to the place that they know the most, you know. And they were definitely, I would hear my name called out there all the time. I would oh, yeah. hear like a, back in the dish area, there was like a shadow figure that would move back there all the time that I would see. And like um, banging on shit when nobody I, was there. I remember there would always be, um, and we would joke about this too, like the Miller Lite would be pulled off the shelf. I don't remember if that was exactly the beer, but it was something like that, where it was like one particular brand of beer that would always be like in the morning, like pushed off the shelf or something. And we would joke like, oh yeah, they're trying to get a drink. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) right, right. Yeah. So, like, I feel like that was when I kind of opened up to it. And I've seen him, like, at my dad's house. Like, uh, I was in there one night, and this girl next door had been killed in a car wreck or something. And I was sitting there in the dark, and I see this sh- this light come across the room, you know, kind of, like, all the way across the living room and go all down the hall. And then when I was in my bedroom in that house, uh, it, I would hear, you would hear, like, a lot of times when you, like a ghost it's like you don't really it's like a knock or a th- or like a thump or a pressure on glass you know like you have a, a yeah. picture behind you and you hear like pressure on the glass and that's kind of what i would relate to is something that's not me it's not from this world is making that noise you know and so. you can tell like there's i almost like to think that there's some sort of like there's some sort of esp that goes on because and I can't ever prove this to anybody and nor do I even feel the inclination to, but with certain experiences where it's like, yeah, I heard this and I know I heard it and I know like, well, yeah, sure. I have that experience, but where does my knowing come from? Because like you said, when you can just tell that it's not something from this world making it, there's like sort of a, there's a psychic element to that. Right. 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 And and I think if you're not open to that, you're not going to experience it. You're not even going to recognize it for what it is. Right. You know, because I remember years, years ago, I had been to Mardi Gras and um, this is free cell phone. Okay. And uh, so we're just like thousands of people and you're just holding on to each other, hoping you don't lose each other in the crowd, you know? Yeah. And I t- took a bunch of pictures and I was on a lot of hallucinogens, man, like massive amounts of liquid acid. And I was taking pictures on film because we didn't have digital cameras in. And there were so many spirits that showed up in those pictures, like in the windows of these old houses. Like there was like a, a, a Confederate soldier in one of them. And one oh, of them wow. was, just, yeah, like, yeah. And like almost like a toy soldier, but it was like a real, you could tell it was a real, had been a real person at one point. And just the images that I caught, and you know, New Orleans is one of those cities where the veil is thin, you know. Absolutely. And, yeah. So, like, when you're when the veil is thin, and then you're on hallucinogens, and it's it's all open to you, you know. There was a house that I had a buddy that lived in in Atlanta, also, and that place 
it was like a portal or something. So this house had a particular vibe that was just like, okay, there's just something going on here. Yeah. And I remember one night I stayed there and I went to sleep. I was visiting my friend. He lived there with, with his girlfriend. And uh, the way the house was laid out was that all the rooms, you could kind of walk around it in a circle. You could walk around the house from room to room in a circle. That's just how it was laid out. Right. right. And so at night when I went to sleep, I was falling asleep and I could hear doors opening and closing all throughout the house That's where it circle. sounded like they were walking around, you know? Right. right. And the next morning, I, I tell my buddy, I said, hey, because, you know, sometimes they'll like open and close certain doors to keep the cats in a certain area or, you know, what have you. And I was like, were you guys, were you guys opening and closing doors last night? And he said, no, we fell asleep right when we went to bed. I did take psychedelics at that house and I had a, like a shamanic dismemberment at that house. It was right before I got sober and I had taken mushrooms and I saw these beings like reach into me and take out these pieces of me that were like black and put in something else. Okay. And weeks wow. later I got sober. That's wild. Really cool. Yeah, very cool. But continue. There's been so many and like, especially like some of the stuff that I've done with like um, high magic and uh, any kind of ritual, stuff like that. It, really good experiences. And I've even seen like a demon possession at one of these things, like, like full on. I didn't realize what was going on at the time until somebody was like, oh, no, there's there's somebody inside of this girl. She was I mean, they were wearing her out physically. You know, what did it, how did that manifest? What was she doing? She was, well, we were like the, uh, you know, around the fire, uh, drumming and dancing and stuff like that. And it wasn't really like music was playing, but definitely lots of drumming. And she just started showing out and like dancing crazy and playing people's drums and spinning around. And it was a little uncomfortable uh, for a minute there because you, she was just getting physically exhausted, you know, like the, the spirit was not ready to let her go until I guess they completely wore her out. I don't really know. I know people were trying to help her, you know, but I didn't really know much about that stuff back then, you know, um, but it was wild to watch. I bet. Yeah. Any other stories about any kind of rituals like that? Like I, that's just fascinating to me. I always like to hear about that kind of stuff. Um, um, well, I've done a lot of like the Beltane rituals. I've done a couple of the Maybon, uh, like going into fall and winter rituals and stuff like that. And I've even been to one in Miami Beach that was like a fall. It was like a Peruvian thing, which, you know, there's so many, such a cultural mishmash down in Miami that I read about a drum circle and I'm like, oh, I'll go check it out. It ended up being this full blown ritual. It's full blown uh, going back into the earth. And become a part of the bear, you know, the hibernation, all of that whole thing. And it was wild, man. I never knew that um, Latinos were inclined that way, you know, besides like the, you know, the Caribbean. Yeah. Peru has a really rich shamanic uh, tradition. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. It's it cool mostly, to hear. It was mostly women that were doing it, which is pretty cool. Um, which most of, most of the stuff I've done like that, there is a, male factor but it's always been very maternal you know yeah like a male type thing. so and some of those some of those rituals man sometimes spirits get into you like i've had bird spirits get into me like where i'm just like okay i'm a bird <laughs> yeah <laughs> <You know>? awesome <laughs> or um i've seen my friends do it it's like a crow and stuff like that and like I'm just seeing some really, I've been lucky to be present for these type of things, you know? Yeah. Most people would never even could wrap their head. No, no goat sacrifices or anything like that. Uh, right. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stereotypes, but um, yeah, I'm trying to think of specific stuff that like, I feel like as I have uh, become more sober, I don't have those channels are kind of closing off to me, you know? And I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Like I still have spirits um, come to me. Like my friend, um, my friends that were murdered uh, in Little Five Points. One of them I had been roommates with, and 
he was very magical and like an alch- he was an alchemist for sure. You know what I mean? Um, but when he died, it was such a tragic event, you know, and like losing a friend so tragically and so suddenly it just it kind of messes with your head. And then I was watching that movie, Lucy. You seen that movie, Lucy? Yeah. Scarlett Johansson. And when I used to live with him, I used to, people used to come knock on the door, like three knocks. I would always, people always come knock three times, bang, bang, bang. So as I was watching this movie, you know, it was just a couple of days after he passed. And um, this is the very end of the scene where she does the last of the drugs and then she turns into the little, you know, like a USB thing or something like that. And he says, how will I know where to find you? And she said, I am everywhere. And right as she said that, there was a really loud knock on my ceiling. And I kind of felt with my buddy saying, you know, I'm not there anymore, but I'm still, I'm everywhere now, you know? Yeah. But definitely like knocks on the ceiling, stuff like, you know, things that people just don't even think about as something that could be a haunting or a ghost. It's just one of those things that like if you're tuned in, you know exactly what it is, you know? Right. And sometimes that's just paying attention, right? Because right. there's obviously a lot more to it, but I think that's yeah. definitely a, a facet. Um, that's a great story. Thank you for sharing that. Um, what about dreams? Uh, wow. Yeah. That's a whole nother area. Speaking to the dead, right? Right. <laughs> We're having them speak to you. Oh yeah. I'm trying to think. Uh, cause you know, like my mom and dad have already passed. So, uh, I feel a lot of ways connected to them. Like I felt like my cat lived, like my mom lived in my cat or would come to visit me and my cat. And the strange thing was, was that my mom was a a counselor for like drug therapy, drug treatment, uh, like rehab type stuff. And I got this cat right after she died, right? Well, it was a few years after she died, after I moved in this apartment and I would get on a bender, you know, be fucked up for two or three days and this cat i swear to you would have like a little altar on my shelf and it's like got my mom's crystals she she always loved crystals and it's like this little um pottery thing i made for her when i was in girl scouts in like the 70s and it has her stones in there and this cat no shit would take her stones and flip them off this altar Hmm. and not and and then never did it after I stopped doing drugs. You know what I mean? Like it never happened again. Oh, wow. Yeah. So she knew she was like trying to communicate with me. Like, you need to stop doing this. You know, I may be gone, but I'm still here kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Just working for you. Yeah. And luckily I got all that out of my system before my dad passed. So I didn't have to deal with the guilt. (laughs) from him. (laughs) So thanks. <laughs> thankfully that's all over. Well, but I was just to ask about something you were talking about, about jail, oh, like yeah. all, all the prayer that goes on in jail and all the spirits and all the angels that have got to be there working for everybody. Right. Yeah. I never thought about jail that way. You know what I mean? Like everybody, I know everybody in there is religious and everybody in there is innocent, you know, but I never thought about all of the prayer that, that happens in a concentrated spot, you know? Yeah, it's wild to think about, right? Because I really do think that prayer kind of emerges as like ripples in a lake or something in a response to suffering and as a res- in a response to fear and pain. A proportional amount of prayer rises up. Right. And I do believe that these prayers are heard. Uh, and I think that, you know, like everybody, whether they want to s- believe it or not, that's fine has like a coterie of helping spirits. I don't think that I'm special in that, you know, and I can definitely feel it. Well, there's, there's a book that I read many, many years ago. And it's called making the gods work for you. And it has to do with your um, astrological sign and the gods that that sign represents. Like some, I'm a Sagittarius. So Jupiter is my God, is my God. Oh yeah. 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 And they're just waiting for you to give them assignments to help you out. You know what I mean? Or like, I'm the storyteller. Apparently Jupiter, even though Mercury is like the God of communication, Jupiter is the the storyteller. And like, 
that's I guess that's why I've always been good at like teaching people things or like you know motivating people in a way that's just like find a way to communicate with people to where you can help you know what I mean and uh that book has been instrumental and probably helped me doing a lot of things you know especially with figuring out the cyclical signs of your life and uh the ups and downs or whatever like why the fuck you're here in the first place you know the why you're here in the first place is such a good one yeah to to look to astrology for the uh, karmic astrology is really fascinating i agree uh because i think we all have work to do yeah i mean definitely and if i ignore it i'm just gonna have to do it later in worse circumstances right like I yeah think, you know, the egyptians knew that yeah now i had a friend do a past life regression on me one time and she said i've been repeating the same life pattern for the past 12 lifetimes oh wow and that i have to break out of this or i'm gonna just gonna do it again and um it was basically like i've been the child of royalty in several lifetimes and like or like you know not even not even royalty but you know someone who's important yeah nobility or yeah I mean, yeah and like uh my job basically in this life is to love women like i've been i've been a man in my last lives all these past lives that i've been repeating that i've been a man and this one i'm a woman who's a little different than all the other women you know maybe i think it's a fair assessment to say <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah my job in this life is to love women and it's not even specifically like one woman you know because she said when you see the woman you're supposed to love you'll see it in her eyes well i've looked in the eyes of hundreds of women and seen love you know oh wow yeah so maybe it's not just the love of one woman but all of them right that's maybe. really cool yeah i guess <laughs> well yeah i'm sure it can also sometimes be a little frustrating sometimes heartbreaking <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it is that's cool that you were talking too about um about you know jupiter being the teacher kind of the, it's like the say he's the sage um and i've always seen you as very sagely but also that you talked about your your mom being a counselor right that's kind of an yeah. interesting ancestral yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause she definitely had that divine type spirit. You know what I mean? Like not uh of the normal world, as it were, I guess. Cut from a different cloth. Yeah. That's cool that you did that past life regression. I want to try that out. I've never done one. Yeah, I've only done it one time and then she she left me on like a weird like here, you're getting started on it, and I don't know, I kind of got lost. I guess got too relaxed and I couldn't follow the story, but yeah, uh, I saw myself as like a, like a young uh, native American, like a brave. I've seen myself like that. Um, but yeah, a lot of times, you know, it's just hard to tell, you know, like what's what and what's real and what's not, you know, it's hard to tell because, well, I think, and I, we touched, I touched on this actually uh, in another episode, there's a barrier there with the thoughts of this is just me making this up. This can't be right. You know, um, but yeah. once I'm able to get over that, then I can really parse what's going on. And then I can really see, and you know, honestly, like I just go with it nowadays with stuff like that. Um, Cause I've done like sort of a guided journey called a contract clearing where you, where you go and, view like oaths that you've made like either that your ancestors have made or that you made in past lives that are no longer valid and i saw some crazy stuff during that the stuff that carries on was weighing me down from lives and lives and lives ago you know right right and it's a really cool sort of ceremony i mean just really freeing yeah, I feel like I could use one, one or two of those. Yeah, because I mean, like, I feel like there's stuff in the, in my past that I need to clear. Like, it needs to. It's not serving me now, you right. know. And uh, whatever my ancestors did, or whatever the hell I did in past life, uh, if I can get free of it now, because I feel like a lot of the like the women I've dated or been interested in, I definitely it's not. This is not the only lifetime. I have that experience too. 
this is which has ruined my life. <laughs> <laughs> and you never know, like the way karma goes. Sometimes it's like uh, maybe I hurt them in a past life, and so in this life, it's for them to to Hurt teach me. me that same lesson. You know what I mean? I, no, I feel you on it that. It sounds, that almost sounds so cruel, but I don't know. I think we're all here to teach each other and that like you can learn as much as you're willing to learn from how other people treat you and themselves in life, you know? Right. I agree. I agree. Like I definitely felt like I cleared up some karmic uh, energy over the past, but I feel like there's probably some more that I don't even know about. There's, I think there's always more. Yeah. I don't think but, you ever get there. And anyone that says they have gotten there, I'm wary of. It's full of shit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> always work. I mean, if that's the case, you should just die and go on to the next life, you know? Right. Yeah. You be like, all right, I'm clocking out. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with you know, clocking out. <laughs> there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with like, Hey, you know, I'm just going to go be in Nirvana. Like I'm going to go to the top of the mountain and I'm never going to come down. I'm just going to like go meditate for the rest of my life or whatever. But I don't really feel like that's why I'm here. Yeah. Or, or I would have done that because there's been times where I'm like, that's been my only like consolation in life. It's like, well, I could always just go take a vow of silence and just be away <laughs> from it all forever. You know? Yeah. I don't know that's a weird way to like console yourself, but Hey, <laughs> yeah i want to go um i want to go uh, um, be a adopted parent to elephants you know like el- little baby elephants whose moms died how they had to have a person take care of them I oh, I did, I, that's cool i didn't know that was a uh, an I option yeah yeah they, they have to have like a human handler to take the place of the mother because you know they spend three or four years with that bait with that baby elephant until they've learned like they're not only is the gestation long but also the maturity process so when the mother's not there they have to have someone be there with them and they sleep with them at night and they feed them and they exercise them and wash them and stuff and i could totally do that yeah that's that's a good happy place that's a, with an a, elephant. <laughs> a beautiful interspecies project <laughs> yeah man elephants are amazing they're such amazing animals man <sighs> so yeah they're cool they're smart as hell they're way smarter than we are <laughs> yeah, i think most <laughs> most animals are <laughs> to be honest yeah yeah but i mean some of those some of those uh high magic rituals i went to man they were fucking cool as shit like not just because you're on drugs you know but definitely because it's just so much energy like in the fires feeding off of it. And like, you know, I have seen some, I have seen some wild stuff and I, and I'm leaving out some of this stuff that happened because it's just too weird. Like, no, you don't, don't edit. Tell me the weird stuff. Let's go with the weirdest like, thing. I feel like for a long time that like, I guess I just had so many channels open that I felt like I wasn't really in control of my life. And I felt like there was stuff going on behind the scenes all the time that I didn't know about. And like, but also I would go on these weird quests at night, like just kind of like following the stars or like um, signals or, or like lights flashing or something like that. And I would go explore all around the city, but I also did it around this place in Tennessee where I go up in the mountains And I found the guys, the guy that owned the place, I found his hidden cabin on the top, on the side of this mountain, which I had gone up with no shoes on, nothing, not a bottle of water, nothing. I mean, I'm walking on like, I'm just going through the whole thing, man. Like the whole ritual of sacrifice and blood and like claiming that I didn't want to be hurt. I kind of feel like I didn't want to be hurt anymore. You know what I mean? Like, and but yeah, I found this guy's cabin up in this mountain. And of course, I went down the other side of the mountain and ended up in a whole weird couple of places. And luckily, I didn't get my head blown off looking at these people's houses. But um, yeah, I went on these weird quests. And especially at night, you know, since it's Nightbird 
uh, radio, but definitely like from anywhere, you know, like especially from like 11 30 p.m. on, you know, it's pretty weird out there. It, uh, streets wise and like energy wise and everything else. But yeah, I used to go on a bunch of weird quests just like looking for signs for stuff and not even really anything in particular, you know. And I never really did anything on these quests. I just kind of luckily didn't get blown away looking at people's backyards and shit, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, uh, I'm a fan of just the kind of spirit led ramblings. Yeah. You saw oh, yeah. some, uh, you saw some, some, spirit lights or or ufos or what do you think they were what um i sometimes i felt like they were ufos sometimes i felt like i was learning a lesson you know what i mean like uh learning how to read the correct signs and not just all the signs yeah because that's definitely a pitfall that can happen yeah i think everything is something everything is sometimes yeah Right. I just therein lies madness. And that's like how I was when um when we were working together for a time. I was like losing my shit on that stuff. Like Yeah. Because right, as hard as you want to look, you'll always like the connections are there because everything is connected. And yeah, like sometimes they're really blaring. But if you like or I know for me at least, the harder I seek, the more I'm gonna find. And then I could just go down that rabbit hole until I'm just lost if I don't rein it in somehow or practice any kind of discipline. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, definitely. When you're like on drugs all night long, man, there are no guardrails, brother. (laughs) You're just like wide open. Yeah, I think that that like drugs are gateways to. I don't even know, like whatever, you know, they call alcohol spirits. Yeah, I don't think that's you know, like a coincidence or anything. Yeah. Um, and then there well, are drugs, certain, drugs are their own spirits too. Absolutely. Each one has a, a, a spirit. Yeah. Attached. You can just see it in the eyes of someone who's completely husked hollow. And it's, it's like someone else is behind the wheel. And, you know, and I can say that because I've been there too. Yeah. And, and, and it it's, feels like that to be there. It's easier to see when you're not, uh, when you're not there on somebody else. You know what I mean? Like, Right when you have that, see, like I can see where you were at at the time, but I you wouldn't talk to me about it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, because that's kind of the nature of that beast, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely think nobody understands. And, right, and and, uh, and also the judgment of <clears throat> admitting that you're doing these things that are so taboo in our society. You know, right, right. And the thing, the funny thing is that it's not funny, but it kind of is, I guess you got to laugh to keep from crying. If, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, if I would have just opened my mouth and been honest, help would have come. Yeah. Right. But, but and, and it didn't until I was able to do that. Right. Right. And I mean, that in a way is kind of an answer to prayer, whatever you want to call that. Well, yeah. Cause when I tell people that I just stopped doing it, you know, they're like, well, was rehab a part of it? Or did you get counseling? I'm like, no, I just stopped. I just didn't want to do it anymore. Was no longer interested. Yeah. Yeah. And and I haven't missed it one day since. And I was thankful because God knows how much people spend money wise and everything else wise trying to get clean off the of drugs that I've been able to just walk away from. And I'm very thankful for that. Yeah, it leads to immense gratitude. And I can only call it personally for myself. I call it grace, you know. Yeah. That's what grace is. And it's a miracle. And I people sometimes ask me, like, how did you how did you do it? And I say, I didn't do it. <laughs> you know? Right, right. Some power did. Yeah. Well, you definitely Some, had help. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And I had help too, you know. Yeah, and I definitely had people that loved me and, and were on my side and spirit people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You're talking in recovery and especially AA stuff about the total personality change. 
I didn't want to be that person anymore. Yeah. And I just had to open my mouth and say a couple words. And then the journey began, you know? Right. Well, I had set a goal for myself when I wanted to stop. And I gave myself a little wiggle time. But by the time the wiggle time was over, I was just like, yeah, I'm good. You know? And and I didn't want to be that person anymore. And I didn't want to and I didn't want to be chasing a sack, you know, in my forties. And I didn't want to, you know, all everything that goes with it. You know, everything that goes with it. Right. So uh, you know, having only one interest, like, is not a very interesting <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's a certain thing as being too focused. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Sing- yeah. Singular focus is not always, um, that can also be called tunnel vision, right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So. So do you believe in aliens or what do you think? <laughs> I totally believe. It. I've seen, I, I have seen an alien spacecraft uh, when I lived in Carrollton. I mean, you know, it's weird out there anyway. Uh, we were coming to the city and one flew over the highway. And like, you know, there's a lot of empty space out there. And uh, I kind of cut out of the corner of my eye, but my, fr- my girlfriend at the time definitely saw it. And she pointed it out to me. Um, but like in the city, I, and I know people that lived out there that had had like abduction stories, stuff like that. Um, which I, I mean, who am I going to say you're full of shit? You know, I don't know. Um, I mean, I definitely think there's aliens out there. I think that, I think our government's led by reptilian greys. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> you know, like those people are not humans that are up there, you know? Yeah. Def- there's something definitely going on there. Yeah. But I mean, what a huge waste, like I say, it would be a huge waste of space if we were it and we were the most intelligent. There's no way. There's no way. Right? Yeah. No yeah. way. No way, and maybe they stay. Maybe they're staying away from us for a reason. Maybe they're like, "Ah, we're good. We'll just lock the doors when we roll by." You know, right? <laughs> oh yeah, totally, totally. The bad part of the galaxy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. I think about yeah, that we're... too. I'm a big fan of the interdimensional. Isn't even a great word, but like this. Yeah, I think there are actually probably nuts and bolts aliens too. You know, in actual spacecraft. But the idea of like a lot of these experiences are spirit experiences filtered through the lens of consciousness of the person that's having that experience. Jacques Vallée has a whole book about this called Dimensions, I think, Mm -hmm. where it just he goes and he he tells all these accounts of like fairy abductions and changelings and experiences with that. And then he goes into descriptions of um alien abduction experiences and they're really similar Uh uh-huh really Really similar yeah okay that's fascinating to me right because who's to say that it's just that it's not probing your ass and and kissing you goodnight right yeah 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 it's uh (laughs) (laughs) but there is that like sexual encounters with both um both offering strange food Bright, tall, or short, depending. Uh, uh-huh. beings. There's a lot of like white ladies, like almost like Marian apparition type deals, right? Like, right. Well, I mean, yeah, because um, definitely there would not always just be one type of uh, slanty eyed, big eyed alien. You know, there's going to be different kinds. There's going to be ones that definitely travel in ships and definitely ones that just show up, you know, right, with, right, and- or in dreams too. Yeah. And then there's like the Mars attacks, like the, <laughs> the Mars attacks right. where like they come on here and kick our ass. Hey, and I definitely think there's some stuff going on on Mars. Like, I think that face is real. People are like, oh, that's just weird shadows. I'm like, no, nah, dude, that's a face. Yeah. You think so? I think so. I mean, it looks like a pyramid, too. Yeah. Well, they found like parts, like machined parts up there, too. And oh, yeah. That- right weird things like that there's some really cool um i'll link this in the show notes it's like this blog of this guy that's like ex-cia or some kind of spook 
and it's called Metallic Man. And he posted, it's this, the account of when they tried, like the CIA tried to remote view Mars millions of years ago. Okay. And they described seeing these tall beings hiding in pyramids because they had destroyed their atmosphere and they had destroyed their planet, basically. And so they were kind of shel- taking shelter from the end of the world. And I want to say there's something on there, too, about you know them trying to kind of send, send some members of their people to Earth to continue. And wouldn't it be just so fucked up if we just did it again? <laughs> well we're definitely on our way we're on a track yeah yeah and uh it's not like we're gonna be able to find another planet that we can go screw up anytime soon you know right so lesson learned well you know i think uh, yeah right and if hey if humanity ends and the world still goes on say la vie you know i, I think it's only fitting honestly yeah, right i mean we don't deserve a planet that's beautiful if we're not going to take care of it. Let someone else have a chance, right? Yeah, right. I want to see what them dolphins are going to do. <laughs> Look them out and go, whew, those assholes are gone finally. Yeah, they finally. <laughs> <laughs> Get the robes. <laughs> and the candles. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I, if you ever see like the videos on YouTube of like ships coming in and out of our atmosphere all the time and like yeah absolutely the international space station and everything yeah uh, have you seen like stuff coming out of the water too it's definitely stuff coming out of the water and that stuff that that navy jet saw that they were like there's no way that that's not Amer- that's not technology for this world oh yeah the tic tac kind of thing and it was yeah. underwater and out of water and stuff when what you want to call a hick or a redneck in the woods sees a mothman and then you want to easily dismiss it by saying like oh you they were just seeing an owl not even taking into account the fact that this person has spent their life in the outdoors and knows what an owl looks like right right <laughs> but you know you can easily dismiss that it's like oh yeah country people are dumb or whatever yeah and we won't even go into that like dumb way of thinking but like what do you do when a highly trained Air Force pilot sees something, you know? Well, I mean, it's I guess it's more believable than like some moonshined up hillbilly out there uh seeing the Mothman in the woods, but like if you're if you're on a flying a F16 or something like that, you're probably pretty sober. Right. And you're you have situational awareness of what the fuck's going on around you, you know. So but I just I guess they kept it hush hush all these years. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of things they've kept hush hush. I can't even imagine all the stuff. I think about that room, that vault at the end of Indiana Jones. Oh yeah. I want to check that out. Well, they were saying that like the Smithsonian has got vaults like that too of stuff that it oh, yeah. there, things they, that don't agree with with the consensus story of history. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that because I think there's a lot of proof that people have been coming to this continent for a long time. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of like Viking artifacts that have been found throughout America. Yeah, right. Right. With like runes and things on them. And then you have, I don't know, I wouldn't be surprised if the Egyptians came here. There's no telling. I mean, they had boats boats and stuff. Yeah. No. Yeah. No reason they can't go across the ocean. I mean, Thor Heyerdahl did it in a in a raft, right? Right. <laughs> I think the, that the Earth is hollow. <laughs> uh, do you think that the moon is hollow? Yeah, definitely think the moon you is think hollow. The moon is, I think <laughs> I think there's got to be there's got to be more to the moon. There's got to be more to the moon than there is. There is. It's always been something that's just like we can't really put our like. I think. Humans have never been able to put their finger on that. Well, and, and it looks like there's like roads and stuff. Like if you look at weird shots of it, it looks like there's like rovers up there or something. Do you know uh, Ingo Swan? I've never heard that name. He wrote the book uh, Penetration. And he's like, a he was one of these remote viewers too. He worked 
in that project. Uh, the Men Who Stare at Goats. Yeah, movie, yeah. Which I never yeah. saw, but it, it's about. It's yeah. a really good movie. Cool. I'll have to check it out because I, I'm really I, interested in the topic. Yeah, it's really good. Um, but so Ingo Swan remote viewed like the dark side of the moon and said that there were pe- like naked men with beautiful long penises standing <laughs> in craters, like doing some kind of, you know, rituals or something like it's really cool to read about. I think that's, I think that's wishful thinking. <laughs> <laughs> on, on Ingo's part. Yes, I would say so. <laughs> but, you know, remote viewing is is fascinating the first time i ever tried it i got a hit yeah where'd you go uh well i had a friend pick a location and not tell me and then i just thought of the first image that popped into my mind without Uh editing it and saying oh that's just me thinking you know like that channel had to be clear right and i said you know i see this brown building with tall trees in front of it And I think that was really about it. And the place she had chosen was like the Arboretum at Harvard. And when we Google image searched it, like it was that like a brown building with tall trees in front of it, which is like, okay, so sure. Yeah. That's also a pretty vague description, but an unpracticed person on their first try. I'll take it as a hit. Yeah. I've done things where like, I've been able to see, like someone I'm really closely connected to, I can see what they're doing. Or sometimes I can even see what they're seeing. Oh yeah. Oh, that's cool. Like this one, this one girl in particular had a really close connection with, I could tell what she was doing when we weren't in the same, we weren't even in the same building together, but like, um, I could always, yeah, was, if we had this, we have, we've always had this really strange, strong connection and it's definitely, uh, something that I've never had with anybody else. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like I can just think about Tim, what Tim see and, and see that. Like, it's definitely just this one person. But yeah, yeah. I could kind of know what she was doing, no matter what she was, where she was, or whether she was having a good time or not. You know, or like, oh, I was just really weird, like a weird thing. And uh, sometimes I could see what she was doing. Very rarely can I see through her eyes, though. You know what I mean? Like, I but I could definitely see what she was doing. That's cool. In my mind, yeah. And so, do you think like are there other people that you have this special connection with? I think you said maybe that you did, or maybe maybe uh, like for a temporary type of thing, but not like it's okay, cool. Like this one that's been going on this long. You know what I mean? With with this particular friend, it's like something that's just like you. Do you think that's another person that you feel like you've known for multiple lives? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think that's that stuff. Karmic stuff to clear up. <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> yeah. <laughs> Always more work. But yeah. And um, definitely, especially like when I told you about like back then, after the whole Reiki thing went down with that guy, like I could definitely feel stuff that wasn't like I could feel pain that wasn't mine, like a headache or something. Or like sometimes if people argued, I could feel like the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I kind of feel like I was banging my head against the wall. Like okay, yeah. or people were arguing around me or if it was particularly intense or something like that. And luckily that doesn't happen as much anymore. Um, I think that was one of those things where I just had too many channels open, you know, and like I've learned to close a lot of them off over the years, just, just for my own sanity. Sure. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. It's not always pleasant or welcome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't and, always want to feel like you're banging your head against the wall. Right. Or feeling everyone's energy or always a lot of the time people think like, Oh, you know, that person's an energy vampire or something, but really it's just them sensing something is wrong you know what i mean like and sure like i do also think that they're energy vampires yeah oh, i think it's a lot of the time it's just like you can just feel that something's going turned kind of you know yeah well that and like my friend used to uh the guy that um uh, i learned a lot of stuff from he talked about it like uh being an empath or whatever like it is, it's a curse and a blessing, but it doesn't always have to be super intense. Like he was like, 
think of it as like your arm is like a, you know, you can turn up your sensitivity like a dial. You can turn your sensitivity up or turn it down. It doesn't always have to be on full blast, you know? Right. And I think that's, that's a really good point that, um, because if anyone listening does have those kinds of experiences, you are able to say, no, yeah. I don't, I don't want this right now. Like this isn't good for me right now. And I choose not to entertain yeah. this right now. And right. to me, it's as easy as, cause I do, I do, um, Reiki energy work, uh, as well. And all it really takes, and this has been one of the best things I ever learned is just to say, this is my energy and no one can take it from me. Right. I don't even know that I have to believe it so much, but if I'd say it, yeah, even if I'm saying it uh, imaginally or in my head, uh-huh. the effect occurs. It's kind of like when I had that haunted house experience and I cast out the demon in the name of Jesus Christ that I didn't even believe in at uh-huh. the time. You know, right. you can appeal to the authority of your higher self. Right. And well, it's like the thing with ghosts, like you can also set up, like if, if you're going to live in a house that's haunted or, or a place that the spirit is there, you can set up ground rules too. You can be like, look, man, don't touch me. You know what I mean? You can right. be here and we can share this space, but you don't have to put, your, you know, don't touch me. Don't knock my shit over. Just like yeah. with a person. It's, you can set it's up like ground- a relationship. Yeah. And right. they can, yeah, they can, you know, I guess if they definitely need your energy to, subsist or to be validated then why would they not accept your rules you know of like oh, I like that. yeah yeah you know it's a given case well yeah because like do you really want to entertain a ghost not really <laughs> yeah i do <laughs> so, maybe depending on the ghost i guess depending um, on the ghost i really dig living in the phone house but to each their own <laughs> I mean, my sister had a house that she lived in in Smyrna that I swear I would have dream. Like, I think people were killed in the house. Like, I would have dreams where I would, you know, where you wake up like <gasps> that kind of dream. Yeah. The only time I've had those kind of dreams was when I lived in the haunted house. Yeah. Like, and, I'm, and I've never had them since. And I, you know, like, but definitely something bad happened in the house, man. I don't know. Yeah, I think we know. I think humans are really good at knowing that kind of stuff. And we just are told our whole lives that that stuff doesn't exist. And it makes it. So if I shut that out of my own experience, then I'm just not going to experience it, you know, right. as soon as I allow it. And but actually, that's not always true, because it was through those things that kind of kicked that door down for me. And kind of like when I look back, I'm able to see that like it was a couple of chance or maybe not chance transgressions into my space and mine into the space of spirit that allowed me to go on the journey that I am on now. Okay. And I don't regret that, you know, but at the time it was really scary, but like, so living in a haunted house, it kind of knocked me awake to the possibility that there was something, you know? Right. And that, that pushed a little stone that caused a whole avalanche. Right. Right. And, you know, I think it's good for healing, but it's, it's not always fun. No, definitely. I mean, not even healing is fun sometimes. (laughs) Healing hurts like hell and it itches. Yeah. (laughs) Doing the work. (laughs) Fucking sucks. Yeah. But, and there is always like it's nice um, to get to the other side, you know, and be like, okay, well, that sucked, you know, but now I'm here, and now, even like, it's like the kids say YOLO, like you only live once, and I feel like I've had like seven lifetimes, just oh, yeah. just in my I'm, I'm 51 now, so just in my 51 years, I feel like I've had several lifetimes, you know. And and all of it has been interesting, and not all of it's been great. But I'm, you know, I just so different than the way I used to be ten years ago and uh, twenty years ago. And you know, it's just it's wild. Life is a trip. It really is. It's the strangest, yeah. the strangest thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, it's there are way more mysteries out there than that we'll ever uncover, you know, but I wouldn't want it any other way. Yeah, definitely. 
Because once it's all solved, what is there? I mean, what is there then? I come back and do it again, I guess. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> Wow. Time flies when you're a nightbird. And that definitely didn't feel like an hour to me. I hope you feel the same way. And I hope you enjoy that conversation as much as I did. And I just want to add at the end here that if you would like to come on and share your story, I'm here and I'm willing to have you on. I would love to hear what you have to say. You're not alone. There are plenty of us that have experiences like this. These are not, I don't even like the word paranormal because as you can see, these experiences are normal. It is normal to have these experiences. And I would even go so far as to say as it is my purpose for being here to have these experiences. That is a human experience. And so when we have these things happen to us, a lot of the times it can be really scary, but it is very human. And so I would love to hear your story. If you'd like to come on, visit us at www.nightbirdpodcast.com uh, where you can send me a message on there and um, tell me a little bit about yourself and, and your experiences and, and we'll get you on the show and talk to you because that's, that's what I want to do here is to just offer a place where people can share what's happened to them and what they've experienced without any fear of judgment, censure, or anything like that. Again, thank you so much for listening. I gotta fly, but I'll see you next week.